the Be Dynamic Podcast. I'm your host, Darnisha, and I'm so happy to see you guys once again. Happy Monday. This is part two of the conversation that we had last week. So this week, we're going to be talking about leveraging your capabilities to gain growth. And one of the things we discussed last week was willingness. So this week, we want to talk about your capabilities your skills, what you're actually capable of. Willingness was more so about your attitude to just do what's needed. But capabilities, that's about what you're actually good at, the things you're actually able to do. When trying to leverage your capabilities to gain growth, you want to first think about what are my skills? What am I actually good at? What are some things that I do without too much effort? Willingness was about effort, doing what's needed. But what are some things that I do without too much effort that I'm good at? So in order to leverage your capabilities, you got to first identify those skills and just figure out how they can be useful for your future. So for instance, for me, one of my skills is I can put an outfit together really well. And I have to figure out how am I going to use that for my future? <laughs> so honestly, that sounds simple, right? Like being able to put an outfit together, that's not something that they teach you in school. Like that's not something professional, but it's still something that I can use in order to grow and get closer to my goals because I can use that in my clothing brand. I can use that skill in order to post nice pictures or get models together for my brand. Like I have that eye for fashion and it helps me in that way. Don't downplay your skills. I feel like I say this to my friends all the time because I have friends who say, I'm not really good at nothing. I don't have a talent. I don't have skills. You have skills and don't downplay it. Don't downplay the fact that you are a gentle speaker. Don't downplay the fact that you can write really well. Like, use those little things that you're good at to your advantage. You must also practice those skills. You don't want that to go to waste. You want to practice and make it better. Baby, um, <laughs> I don't think I was putting it on in middle school. I just, I was not putting it together how it needed to be put together. But it was the confidence in knowing that I don't know. It was just the confidence that, okay, let me try this. And the more I tried something, it eventually worked out. I eventually figured out what I liked. I eventually figured out what worked, but I had to practice and I had to had to have some slow outfits before I finally figured out like, Hey, this is it. This needs to go with this. This works well with this. These colors look great with these colors. Like it took years for me to build that up to become who I am now. So actively practice your skills, no matter if right now you drawing and the dog look like a house and the house look like a dog. It's okay. If that's a skill that you possess and it's not horrible, like clearly you're good at it in some type of way, <laughs> keep practicing at it and gain that confidence in your skills. So people like Jordan, Kobe, Coco Golf, Serena Williams, they just didn't become who they are overnight. It took practice. Like, yes, they knew Jordan and Kobe, they knew they were good at playing basketball. But to become Jordan, Jordan and Kobe, they had to practice. Same for Coco Golf. She's been doing this since she was a kid. She didn't become a champion overnight. They've had to practice hours, hours, countless hours. They had to be willing. And they had to also leverage their capabilities. They knew they were good at it. They just had to make it better. They had to make it good enough to be the best. Channel your inner Jordan, your inner Kobe, your inner Coco, your inner Serena, and make your skills better. Number two, Join in with others. Don't sit on the sidelines by yourself. You cannot play the game by yourself. You just cannot. I'm sorry. You don't know everything. So 
joining in with others can teach you so much no matter if it's joining in with family friends your village they're teaching you things about life or joining in with a team when it comes to business and you guys are just bouncing ideas off of each other and figuring out how to make something work you can't do it by yourself no matter what you want to do you can't do it by yourself if that was the case community wouldn't be a thing networking wouldn't be a thing collaboration it wouldn't be a thing that you see amongst amongst successful people but it is and there's a reason for that there's nobody who is successful in anything that can say it was all me because it wasn't all you if it was all you you would have recorded those videos took those pictures of yourself you wouldn't have had anybody to give you any so, sort of encouragement. But no matter what, a little bit of encouragement from people, a little bit of someone diving deep into your ideas, your thoughts, that helps you along the way. Join in with others and don't be afraid to bring something to the table. And speaking of bringing something to the table, know what you bring to the table and how you can enhance a group effort. How can you enhance the team? How can you enhance a collaboration with someone else? What do you bring to the table? Knowing that can boost your confidence to know like, hey, I'm not just here as a sitting duck. What I do, how I do it, coming from me, it actually helps. It's valuable. It matters. Um, so like, for example, at work, I know that you can put me on any task. You can put me in any position and I'm going to play my role. I'm going to make jokes as I go and I'm going to create a good experience, good atmosphere. That's just how I am. Like, I think I'm a comedian, low key. So I just like to keep it fun and keep it funky, you know, <laughs> but I also do my job and I also work very hard. Um, so you just have to know those things that you bring to the table and know how and why they matter. They do matter, but you got to identify why because sometimes you definitely have to put those things into words. You have to voice, be the voice of reason for yourself and for your skills that you possess. Lastly is learning and adaptation. This is probably the biggest one because over time we know things change. Change is inevitable. We know that. Remain teachable and seek knowledge. Don't just be someone that people can give knowledge to, teach you this, 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 this. Actually go out and seek it because let's say you have a mentor and let's say your mentor is teaching you so many different things. You're getting all of this knowledge, but your mentor is not the only one who can give you knowledge or who has the necessary knowledge you need. Like, read a book, listen to a podcast, watch a documentary, like actually show a little effort that you want to learn new things and that you want to be more proficient, efficient, advanced in your skills that you have. Just being capable isn't enough. Know how to actually work your capabilities. Know how to actually um, spread those capabilities out in different ways so that you can grow let's talk about it like in a relationship standpoint the successful marriages that we see they continuously date each other they continuously learn about each other and this is something that's it's possible like you can do that because like we always say change is inevitable and it's the same for us as humans like we're always gonna change i am not the same girl that my boyfriend met six, seven years ago. Like I'm not that girl. And we literally have to talk, have conversations so that we can know our updated desires, our updated hobbies, our updated needs. And that's how you're successful. Millionaires, people who are successful career wise, I promise you they're reading. They're, they're not just taking what they know and going with it over and over and over again. Because if they did that, they wouldn't progress. 
the world would keep moving without them. So they have to keep reading. They have to keep growing their mindset. They have to keep seeking knowledge and remaining teachable, knowing that you're not the only one who knows something. Um, One thing I always hear from my mentors is that you should be the one in the, be the smallest one in the room. If you're the smallest one in the room, you can learn so much and it's okay to be the, the smallest one in the room. That's good. If I am a thousandaire, I don't want to be in a room with other thousandaires. I know how to be a thousandaire. I want to be in a room with millionaires who can teach me how to get there. If that, like, that makes sense, be in a room that's bigger than you so that you can learn something new, period. Don't stick to the room that you're used to. There's nothing new there. You know how to do that. We're trying to grow. We're trying to progress, not stay stagnant in one place. Success, they leave clues. And that's success in relationships, success in friendships, success in life, careers. They leave clues on how they're successful. You just have to study it and be willing to do some of the things that they've done to be successful. Let's connect the two. Let's connect the whole willingness and leveraging capabilities to gain growth. Because like I said, some people believe, hey, forget what you're capable of, just be willing. But I really think that you can have both of those two two, hand in hand. Like you can be willing while also leveraging your capabilities. I think that makes it even better. Because you can hone in on purpose. You can hone in on exactly like what you're good at and just top it off with some willingness and that effort, that good attitude. Um, Think of willingness like your eagerness, determination to chase your dreams and goals. It's like saying, I'm really motivated to make this happen, right? You got that good attitude. You got that good spirit about it. Honestly, having willingness that's just the that's just the top. That's just the first step. It's like when you're wanting to start a business, but you also need skill, you need knowledge, you need resources, and you need your capabilities. Wanting to start it, being excited to start it, that's that willingness. Saying that you'll do what it takes, that's willingness. But searching out and getting that knowledge, building those skills and building your capabilities, that's what's actually going to turn that dream into a successful reality. And that's the point here. That's what we want to do. We want to bring visions to life. We want to change the dynamic of our lives. We want to implement change, progression, and growth to be dynamic in our lives. You have to strengthen your capabilities along the way and also be willing to do what's needed on top of that. While being willing is crucial, It's your capabilities that truly enable you to turn your aspirations into tangible achievements. Like for you really to see it, I think you really have to connect the two. You have to be willing and you also have to build those capabilities, leverage that in whatever you're doing. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this two-part conversation. Make sure you're commenting below. Let me know what you think. Join in on the conversation. Um, Which one do you think is more important? Do you think being willing is more important or leveraging your capability? Do you think they go in hand in hand? Let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, Make sure y'all check out our social media website, dynamicxfashion.com socials dynamic x fashion um and be on the lookout for some new things from us we are growing and it's only up from here second week of october i hope it's going great for you continue to change progress grow i see you all in the next episode bye i hope you learn to make it on your own and if you let yourself just know you'll never be alone i hope that you get everything you